Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to start talking about internal standards. Um, internal standards can be a little bit of a challenge to figure out at first, but they're really not that bad after all. So the reason why we do this is if we have some sort of loss of solution or perhaps some sort of uh, reproducibility error with our injections. And what you need to have is you have some sort of analyte, which we'll call A, and a standard that you call S. And we want to set up a proportion between these two. So ultimately our goal is to work with the equation that we have some response, some areas, for analyte and for standard, and that those things depend on concentration. So they're proportional to the concentration of the analyte or the standard, and that there's just a proportion, some sort of factor between the two of these. So let's say that we mix known amounts of A and S, and it turns out that we've got 20 millimolars of A and 10 millimolar S. And then you're going to measure them. And let's just say, like, this is a chromatography thing. So you have A, analyte, and S, standard. And we have concentrations of both. Um, so you take the area of this, you integrate it, and you shade it. And let's just say we come out with 20,000 and with 8,000 as our areas. So the very first thing to do is to use the fact that we know the concentration of both and that we have measured areas of both to figure out F. So always we want to figure out what our F area is. And the way you do that is you just plug these things in. So the area of the analyte was 20,000. I know that its concentration is 20 millimolar. It's going to be equal to F times, okay, 8,000 is the area for that over 10 millimolar. Okay, hold on a second, my cat's annoying me. All right, so you do this, you have to then rearrange it. So F equals the 8,000 over 10 divided by the 20,000 over 20. And that ends up being 0 0.800. All right, so good. We know what the response factor is. We know what F is. And now that means that we can use this equation anytime because we'll always know what our concentration of standard is. You can always measure the two areas, and of course the concentration of analyte is what we're ultimately looking for in the long run. So let's just suppose that we take some unknown now, and this is like a really, really cute Erlenmeyer flask, right? Um, I'm an epic drawer. Okay, so we have unknown A, and we make a mix. And let's just say that we mix one mil of 100 millimolar standard S, and 9 mils of unknown analyte. Alright, um, because it's unknown, we really can't do anything about that, but what we can do is we can go ahead, we can measure them, we can do chromatography again, we can get the areas, we can come up with new numbers for areas, and let's say we do that, and let's say that we get area of, I don't know, how about 79.82 for S, and let's say that the area for analyte is 14.581. Okay, that works. Now what? Well, we use this equation, but we just diluted stuff, okay? And so, yeah, it was one mil of 100 millimolar S. What is it ultimately in the thing that we measured? So in the sample that you measured, you have to deal with dilutions. So one mil, this is just M1V1, M2V2, times 100 millimolar, is going to be, well, 10 mils in the end. That's our dilution, 1 plus 9, times, I don't know, some amount of S. Of course, that's pretty simple math. You can probably do that in your head, and you find out the concentration of your standard is 10 millimolar. How convenient. I used the same number I did before. Okay, next up, you go ahead and you plug things in. Now, the area of our analyte goes here. It's 14,581. What do you put on the bottom? We don't know, okay? So that's our variable. And then we need F. Good, we just got that in our previous step. And then we're multiplying that by the area of our standard, in this case 79.82 over a concentration of 10 millimolar for the standard. Okay, uh, we need to solve this for A, so we'll multiply everything by A, divide everything by this, so this ends up coming up here and this whole thing goes down there. And so we get A equals, um, doo -doo, A equals 14.581 over that big thing. So you can probably see where this is going. This is going to the calculator. Um, I was all nice and I already plugged this in and I got out 14.61 millimolar. 
okay? So we have concentration, but we're not done yet, okay? So that's the concentration in the dilution. Uh, we had one mil plus nine mil, so this is actually the 10 mil total. So alas, you guessed it, at the end you have to undo that dilution. So that was the concentration in 10 mils, but it originally came from nine mils. So multiply by 10, divide by nine, and we end up with 16.23 millimolar of your analyte. And so you have done an internal standards calculation. Cheers.